that 15 minutes. And that's why I'm talking about lifting the cultural veil of our company for the first time ever. Nobody gives a shit about your corporate logo. <laughs> Nobody cares about, you know, I want to say Pratt & Whitney, yeah, it's delicate, it's 90 years old, I'll probably get a, I'll probably get a fucking lawyer's letter after that, but, <laughs> you know, I care about Peter, because Peter is a really cool dude, and he's down to earth, and he's got great stuff to say, I can touch Peter. I know what Peter's about, I've shared stories with Peter, I've shared a beer with Peter, you know, we have things in common, that's why I want to do business with you. Um, and that's why I talk about lifting the veil. How do you unveil, you know, the corporation, and let's look behind the logo. That's what I mean. I talked about also brand cross-pollination. Brand cross-pollination. Because I like Peter so much, I'm going to love Pratt & Whitney. Not the other way around. I'm not going to see um, a Viagra commercial and love Pfizer. I don't give a shit about Pfizer. I may really love the farmer rep who sells them to me. I don't take Viagra. But if I would never, I don't, I, would ne I, I may love the farmer rep and, and through brand cross-pollination, I'm going to like Pfizer. Hit me up. So this is why. Every time you give somebody a thumb, everybody, every time you like a post, or you give it a heart, or whatever the hell you do on social media, everything except for Tinder, I don't know what happens there. Every time you give something a thumb, it means something. There's something behind that. And this is what this is all about. People want to know about you. They want to do business with you. And a lot of you may have seen my, my post about the, um, um, uh, the, the homegrown Eugenie Bouchard, uh, who was serving at the Rogers Cup, and I saw it, and I made a post about it. And um, I talked about the serve principle, and how that, hit me up. The serve principle, service, empathy, relentless, vision, and energy. For me, this is like, these are my go-to words. When I'm waking up in the morning, and I'm looking in the mirror, I'm like, I'm saying this to myself. Like I'm a sick, like I'm a psycho. I'm, I'm just saying it to myself, my wife thinks I'm crazy, but it feels so good. I'm like, today I'm gonna serve, I'm gonna serve, I'm gonna serve, and these are the words, okay? And empathy for me is huge, I'm gonna get into that. Let's, let's, keep, let's keep rolling, because I know that eventually you guys are gonna cut me off. So let's keep going. Uh, yeah, so let's take an oath. So repeat after me. If you can't believe and you can't do this shit, then you should not want to be a leader. And it's okay not to be a leader. You don't have to be a leader. Not everybody's born to be a leader. But if you're gonna be a leader, play the fucking part. You know what I mean? Don't just hashtag leadership and then, you know, you know, pop bottles all night. You know, just like Charles said, you know, he stopped spending his money on that. So repeat after me. I shall be true to my word. I shall educate my audience. I shall entertain my audience. I shall manifest a pleasing attitude. That's tough to say. I shall always try my best. That this is this is the fundamental mantra. The fundamental. It looks so simple. It looks so obvious. But if you can't do every single one of these. You cannot be a leader. You cannot be a leader. I will send you this presentation. You need to memorize the slide. Let's keep going, sister. So there's a history in networking. I was interviewed by Ivan Meisner, the founder of BNI, and he's like the godfather of networking. He's the guy that put together all the BNI groups all over the world. He's the guy that wrote the book on networking. He interviewed me. And uh, I, went to, I went head to head with him, and I challenged him on some of the concepts. He's a great dude. He's old school, but old school is still working. Old school is still working. New school, there's a big issue with new school. I'm gonna get into new school, but let me, tell you, let me tell you how people have assembled throughout history. First, there was the cognitive revolution. This is when people got a little smarter. Uh, and I call this the mosh pit network. People are just, banging into each other, they don't know what to do with each other, and they're, they're, just, they're just mosh pitting. Agricultural revolution. People are like, let's start farming. Let's start farming. People start getting together and sharing ideas. So okay, a little bit, you know, we're getting closer. Then bam, scientific revolution, a global system of connections. This is where we're at. 
Information is going all over the place. We're obsessed with data, big data, big data, big data. I want to know my relationship status. I want to know this, I want to know that. We're all obsessed with data. And now the digital revolution, this is where we're headed. The digital revolution. This is where data and technology are driving the relationships. This is messed up. Computers are dictating who we're meeting. Hit me up, sister. <laughs> so I'm scared of this because the only thing that makes us human is the fact that I can interact with Peter or Justin or Tranny and I can shake their hand and I can have a conversation with them that, make, that makes me feel good. So I have, I have identified the empathic algorithm. This is a, this, I completely made this up, by the way. But I made this up to, to stress the point that if we are not connecting in this way, if we are not taking the data on social media, and putting it into a setting like this, we will be completely useless and we will never monetize these relationships. And we will never monetize social media, okay? Because the pros and the cons are the same. It's so easy for me to like a post. It's so easy for me to write someone a recommendation. It's quick, it's cheap, it's predictable, and that's an issue. Hit me up. Is that a clap or somebody trying to shoot at me? What was that? All right, so check it out. Empathic, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get right to it. What is it? There's a formula everybody needs to follow. The empathic algorithm is knowledge times experience times empathy times time. Knowledge, experience, empathy, time. You need to hit every single four of these when you post on LinkedIn, when you post on social media. You need to post with knowledge. Don't post on shit that you don't know about. You need to post with, with experience. Things that you know to be true, because you've lived them. Empathy, post with emotion, post from the heart, post in a way that people will connect to you. And when I say time, you gotta do that shit over a long time. This is not, I'm gonna post for a week and, and, and you know, pop bottles and you know, no, it doesn't work that way. You gotta do it for a long freaking time. Hit me up. So there's three things. When I talk about experience in that equation, experience, there's three things that you need to hit. Consistency, authenticity, and boldness. Consistency, authenticity, boldness. You need to do these things to be a player in your ecosystem, in your network. Yeah, I'm going faster, babe. No, I forgot, this is boring, keep going. Consistency. Consistency. Routine posting builds familiarity and credibility. Some, some dude, uh, last month almost drove me over at the Deja, that parking lot. He's like, you're that guy from LinkedIn. And he almost hit me. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I am. Like, what do you want from me? And I just wanted to say hi. Because he sees my face all the time. Probably doesn't know what the fuck I'm saying half the time. But he sees me all the time and it creates that familiarity. Where he, he, he thinks he knows me. And that's great. That's what I want to do. But don't, you know... The, the, the projects that you're doing, that you want to build consistency for, they have to be happening now. Or they have to be happening soon. Don't, if you're launching something in, in six to nine months, that's a long time, that's, that's a long marathon. When you start posting, make sure you post for things that are happening now. People don't want, hype is good, but don't go nuts. Keep your pants on. So there's two ways that you know if you're being consistent that I've, that I've, I've determined. Are you associated with your industry? When people see me, they see a lawyer. They know I'm a lawyer. I don't talk about law because it's fucking boring. But when they see me, they know I'm a lawyer. Jamie, uh, I got a DUI. Jamie, I got a ticket. Jamie, I need a company. Jamie, I need this. Jamie, I need that. They know I'm a lawyer. They don't even know if I do that kind of law. But they know I'm a lawyer, and that's great. And the next thing that you need to look out for is, are people referring to your posts in person? Somebody came to me last week and they said, wow, that serve principle with the thing was so great. And I said, thank you so much. And the, you know, buyer beware, caveat emptor. Once you start, you cannot stop. It's like the mafia. If you don't want to ever, if, 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 you want to, if you intend on stopping, don't do it. Unless your project is finished and you cashed out. But if you want to build a brand, you cannot stop. It's like a life, life sentence. Hit me up. So that's how you be consistent in a post. How, how, how do you be authentic? How are you authentic in a post? We, are, we have so much, we're bombarded every day, and we're bludgeoned, we're shut down. You know, I see, you know, I see Big Mac signs, I see this, I see that. 
I'm getting, you know, tampon commercials, diapers, everything's hitting me, and I'm tuning it out because I don't want to, I don't want to think about all this stuff. So if you want my attention, you got to be authentic. You got to say something that hits my heart. So when you start posting at events, FOMO hits in, and you, and you, you, you know, what happens is that you're not going to want to, you're not going to want to miss something Peter does because Peter brings the action. Peter brings the A game, and we know that you bring your network, and you come in and have fun, party, and you're productive. And how do you know if you're being authentic? Like the message that they're hearing. So we want to, we want to, we want to trample the status quo. Let's keep going. I'm almost done, guys. All right. So basically, I broke it down. The Vitruvian post. This is pure Da Vinci, and this is the way that a post should look, in my opinion, to hit all those points. Um, in, in all those points, so you have the head, the body, the legs. I'm not going to get into it. Let's keep going. I don't want to talk about this either. Keep going. So let's talk about comments really quick. Um, if you follow Yann Lajoie, even Bobby Bedochka, who, who's on fire recently, and even Jen, these people have um, an extreme um, ability to connect so quickly on social media. They, they react fast. They like the post they're tagged in. They retweet, they repost. They're rehacking, Tommy commenting, they're starting conversations. That's the way that you create momentum. That's the way that you make magic. So I created a concept called comment fishing. Comment fishing, you drop an anchor, you drop an anchor with a like, you drop a comment, and you follow that post. Don't let go of it. There's gold in that post. You go back to it every couple days. See what people are talking about. See somebody who you should be hooking up with. Somebody may have made a great comment. There's so much value in, a, in the comment section. Um, that spiral from your post that you should be looking at, not even the post itself. That's just the, that's just the conduit to the conversation. So look up and then, so go, go, go fishing. I'm almost done, guys. <sighs> they don't go. They don't go. What up? This is what happens <clears throat> in real life. So I used to be a lawyer that did a lot more law. So I used to be out there, it's like I said, it's like I said, it's like I said, it's like I said, over and over again. And it was great, it was very traditional. Something happened in my career, in my life, where I went, I went the other extreme. Social media, social media, social media, video, 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 video. And it was messed up, because what happened was that you're not in the office as much, you're not spending time with clients, and you're, you're desperately looking for that balance and you're wondering why you're not connecting like you did before. So there's two extremes. Either you're not on social media or you're completely on social media and not enough in real person. And this is essentially the concept of blue pill and red pill. Just like the matrix, you have a decision to make. If you take the blue pill, you're stuck in social media la la land, which is great. I mean, I'm, I'm there too all the time. <laughs> but, but you can't stay there. No, you can't stay, like you'll get fucked up there. Like your mind will get messed up and you will lose relationships that way. You really will. Because my, my, my whole industry is based on personal contacts, personal relationships, and your ability to connect and trust somebody. And social media will only take you so far. So it's great to do FaceTime, social media. FaceTime, 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 social media. But there needs to be a balance. So when you're offered the chance, when you're offered the opportunity, take the red pill. It's gonna bring you back to real, real life. It was the red pill they took in Matrix, right? Do you remember, was it the red pill? I think Keanu Reeves took the red pill, but anyways, take, take the good pill where you're out of social media land. You get out of the Matrix! And that's where, that's, where the, uh, that's where it is, but you need to do both. Let's keep going. I don't wanna talk about that. <laughs> Connection boomerang, so important. You need to be a connector in your audience. You need to be a connector. There are so many people around you that need to be connected that, that have no idea that they should be connected to. So you take your connection boomerang, you throw it where it belongs, and it's gonna come back to you. Is that two minutes, or just give me a peace sign? <laughs> two minutes. Take that boomerang, throw it to your connection, and it comes back to you. When you create value for him, there's something that happens inside of him. We have this, humans have this deep-seated um, indebtedness where when something nice happens to us, when, something, when somebody does something nice for us, we feel obligated to return the favor. 
we feel indebted. This is just, this is how we're built. You know, whether we're a gangster or we're a school teacher, we're always gonna have that sense of, that guy had my back, or that person substituted my class. You're always gonna look for an opportunity. This person becomes your brand ambassador. This person becomes your salesperson. So you, you need to connect, you need to bring value to your audience um, without expecting anything in return. So important, so it's the reciprocity principle. People will be indebted to you. On y va, on est presque fini. So where are we going next? Where are we going next? Traditional networking is here to stay. I'm sorry, sorry, but it's here. It's not going anywhere. I make my biggest deals. Um, I make my best contacts, my best friends, still through a handshakes. It can start socially sometimes or on social media, but you need to offboard it. Social networks amplify our abilities to connect. They amplify our ability to connect. Everybody should be taking pictures here, posting them, your friends are gonna like them, and they're gonna feel that they should be with you because you're a guy who's connected. You're a guy who can bring value to them. You're a guy who's fun. You're a guy who's authentic. So social networks amplify who you are. Super important. Um, so use social media to close real business, and the empathic algorithm is where you should be looking to connect on an authentic level. Use your emotions, be vulnerable, that's where the magic is. I'm Jamin Isri, and I have nothing else to say. Yeah.